Welcome back to the Saturday Morning Cartoon Show, everybody. This is a live gameplay stream of the Jump Rangers tabletop role-playing game. Uh, for anybody who's joining us for the very first time, Jump Rangers is a tabletop RPG about kids' space commandos fighting alien dinosaurs and giant robots and all kinds of other space monsters to secure a safe future for humanity among the stars. And I am the creator of Jump Rangers. My name is Tennyson Easted. And I'm going to let these other players introduce themselves just briefly and tell us a little bit about their characters. We're going to go right across the top. So let's start with Ippy Looney. Hi, everyone. I'm Ippy Looney. Um, I am at Ippy Looney, I P I L U N I, on all social media. And my character is an eight-year-old autistic named Lyra. And she is in the Xenocore, which means she likes to study aliens. And she has two pets. Okay. And we got silence. <laughs> Cricket! I'm done. Okay, next. Okay. Uh <laughs> Hello, my name is Misha. Don't follow me. I play as Wizard, <laughs> part of the Psy Corps with propensity towards kinetic abilities. Excellent. And Buster is a little bit of a unique character on the stream. Buster is a robot that utilizes the same artificial intelligence, the same glitchy, screwed up artificial intelligence. Um, that humanity's colonists use in all of their autopilots and in other places around the colonies. And every session where we have a Buster, and this particular case, Buster is a, is a flying robot, very much like the robots from Batteries Not Included with all kinds of gadgets and gizmos that Buster can at least try and pop out at any given point in time. And Buster is played by members of our Patreon who are of the Beta Plus tier or higher. And today we have Ty Cooper playing Buster. Ty, do you want us to tell us a little bit about yourself and, and how you got into gaming? Please repeat the question. You are a little laggy. No worries. I'm asking if you want to tell us who you are and how you got into gaming and maybe how you came across Jump Rangers. Well, I am Ty, of course. But I came across gaming at a very hard because I really had nothing else to do. I really got into gaming because of my uncle and because of my father. And I play games on a daily basis and I came across Jump Rangers when I was looking for uh, screens on Twitch about D&D. &D. And then... Oh, cool! And then I found out that I can play. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us. Thank you for supporting the game. Thank you for coming to play today. Um, so this is game three of an ongoing adventure. Right now we're pulling the story that we're telling from the expansion material that's been written for Jump Rangers. And this particular um, adventure is in the very last chapter of the core book. The core book of Jump Rangers is available for free for anybody who wants to read it. If you go to patreon.com backslash jump rangers, you can download it from the website. What's that? Test my connection. All right, let's carry on. So, uh, where was I? If you want to check out the um, core book for jump rangers, you can find it on the Patreon at patreon.com backslash jump rangers. Every other supplement, everything else we're creating, um, there's artwork coming soon. We have music coming soon, as soon as we've done enough illustration to build out the body of work for the expansion material. We're going to have um, comics coming. There's five expansions already written for Jump Rangers, and I'm in the middle of writing a uh, youth readership novel right now. All of this uh, and whatever comes next for $5 or more per month. So if you enjoy the game, if you like what we're doing here, please check it out. Please support us. Um, this expansion, this, this particular campaign is in the 
core book. And the other campaigns that we're going to be doing are in the expansions that have already been written for Jump Rangers. And my job is to make sure that I stay ahead of the stream <laughs> in terms of my writing so that we have stuff to keep doing. Um, so that's what's going on with that. Our heroes are on an undiscovered planet until now. They had stolen a ride aboard a Saurian mothership uh, to carry some data, some intelligence, some military intelligence to General Arden Paxis on planet Battleground. And instead, the mothership that they had snuck aboard landed here on planet Rock because they're conducting mining operations of unique and valuable octonium. Turns out that that octonium is the life source of the uh, native creatures of rock, uh, rock beings uh, called rockmen. And um, that is, uh, that's where we are. They've just um, befriended the leader of a rockman settlement named Quartz. They've been offered provisions and they've shared the data they brought with them or they're in the process of sharing the data they brought with them, uh, which is all about Saurian power sources. So uh, we'll find out what happens next as we continue first contact. Does anybody have any questions for me before we get started? Nope. What was the what was the guy's name? The 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 little one. Oh, Iggy. Iggy, right? Okay. Iggy, Iggy, and Quartz. Iggy is a baby rockman that Lyra helped uh, give life to. I in the in the wreckage of a Saurian attack. And Iggy is also the newest member of the Azure Mountain, which is a community of, of Rockmans. So um, you've just been fed a, a refreshing meal of grains and, and vegetables. And um, you have no idea where those came from because there's as far as you can tell, no organic life on planet rock that didn't come on board the mothership um, Merciless. The mothership Merciless? Yes, that's right. Uh, but somehow Quartz has it to offer you. You've had a good night's sleep inside your, your brand new quarters inside the Azure Mountain. And the next morning... Uh, unless, well, are you guys going to do anything that night? Are you going to sneak out and explore anything? Or are you just going to get to sleep and and see what the day brings? I'll sleep. Okay. You get some sleep. Smart move. Never know when you're going to get it again. <laughs> so, the next morning, Quartz uh, approaches your doorway and kind of stands there without much sense of decorum. You don't know exactly how privacy works on Planet Rock, but apparently knocking is not a thing. So, there he is in the door, and you can hear in both of your minds the booming voice of his telepathic presence as, as he bids you good morning. Hello. Hello. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> understanding the technical information that you have brought to us so that we can fight back against the Saurians is going to take some research and experimentation. So what I want is for you to join me in a private laboratory so we can develop the techniques that we will use to overcome them. As you said, we will need... A, we will need forces and those forces will have to be trained so this is when we figure out exactly how to train them will you come with me we're not really a science type are we i'm a science type oh you are i am am i hearing anything <laughs> <laughs> Ty, can I ask you to put on your headset so you're speaking directly into the microphone? I think it would help a great deal. <laughs> it's wrapped around the Oh, that's so much better. I just might not hear you guys as well because I don't... It's only connected to the mic, not the 
audio. Oh, and it's for a second. It sounded great. Now it sounds like you're underwater. Yeah. Okay. okay test, test. Oh, it's not working. Oh, it's the mic in the headphones. Huh. Yeah. Sounds like it's in the cups. Hmm. It was working for like <laughs> second. Second. Oh. That was me. <laughs> Is it better? Give us a sound check, guys. Nah, it sounds like you're. It sounds like. Sounds like you're in the abyss. Can you check the connection? It says I'm fine connection wise. Is that better? Yeah. 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 Okay. So we'll go with that then. Okay. 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 Perfect. Perfect. Now we're, now we're picking. That's because I. That's why. Oh, I see. I'm now using the computer's okay. mic, which which is I was trying to avoid because it picks up more audio in the area. I see. Gotcha. Okay. Alrighty. So, um, Did that happen? leading the two. <laughs> My Here question we are. was: Here we are. Make it work. My question was, do I, do I hear any of this? Because I do not have a brain; I have circuit ports. <laughs> right. Oh, uh, good question. No, you do not hear any of this. So, um, so I just, all you, I'm all just you have there to go I'm just sitting there looking puzzled. Then. <laughs> yeah. All you have to one. Well, you, you your eyes don't really offer much expression, but you can ask questions of your Sam's if you would like. <laughs> My eyes can change color. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> oh, very good. Very good. I like it. Blue is confusion. My eyes are blue. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be interested to see if any of the other... Uh, if uh, what, what buster rules everybody comes up with. <laughs> <laughs> different colors for different emotions. Buster. Right. Exa or, or like someone else just has a completely different way of expressing them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I now currently have blue eyes, as in confusion. Okay. Buster has blue eyes, you guys. <laughs> note, note the blue. Um, and with that, uh, Quartz marches out through your door and leads you out of the um, Azure Mountain, out through the main entrance. And uh, you, you remember everything that is happening now from the last game. Am I right, Ty? You know what this place looks like. You don't require a description personally. Okay, good. So, <laughs> as Quartz out of the Azure Mountain, he, he, it, it focuses on the ground in front of it, and a massive stair opens down, down, down into the bowels of Planet Rock. Is it lit? Quartz just marches. No. I mean, are, are we fumbling around? I mean, it's lit in the sense that, like, it's a magic staircase. <laughs> it's pretty lit. <laughs> but it, there's no light. So. <laughs> By the way, briefly, everyone, please note this amazing mason jar cozy that my wife made for me. It's my new favorite. We're doing a lot of stuff with mason jars. We're making coffee in mason jars, pour overs. We're making ice cream in mason jars. And for my comfort and safety, I have been given this mason jar cozy so that I can eat all of my mason jar foods without burning or freezing my hands. It's and I made that too. <laughs> it's a link dice bag for anyone who's not in the know. Mm -hmm. I've been busy this quarantine, so, but can I? I I'm just following along with blue eyes. I have no idea what's happening. That's okay. Uh, maybe <laughs> I can play a little bit. Sam. Uh, so. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Do you want to pull out your? Do you want to pull out your torch, Buster? He. I don't have torch. <laughs> what does he have to? Roll? Okay, Buster whips. 
well, the Buster's got time to figure this out. Rolling is more for combat. Uh, okay. Because if Buster makes multiple actions, um, he only has two body to do it, and that's when things get very complicated. Um, Buster pulls out a torch and shines it down the staircase for you. And down you go. And as you descend below the earth, the surface of rock, the ground seals up behind you. So you're essentially walking on a bubble of stairs that works its way down into the bowels of the earth. And you trudge down this stair for far longer than you can keep track of time. Your legs are burning. Um, it's exhausting. And um, I would like everyone to make a body check for endurance because you're walking quite a long, long ways. This is the same endurance check that you made before. Couldn't, couldn't Wizard just float his way down, though? If Wizard would prefer. Is that, is that Wizard's... So, Wizard, as I, as I recall, you had a target of seven for floating, right? For floating yeah, yeah. to avoid labor. Okay, <laughs> roll your spirit into a target of seven. <laughs> the manual labor alternative. <laughs> and and uh, Ippy Looney, do you have what's your what's your what's your role? And we'll get to you in just a sec, Buster. We'll make sure that you I keep up. It. Basic training. Aliens. Nope. Uh. Sneaking. Is that not sneaking? But it's sneaky. Um, <laughs> telepathy? Nope. Smart, quick, autistic, and observant. I can use observant and I can use... Okay. And you can use what? Autistic, because it's a sensory input. Oh, I'll give you observant trying not to trip. That's three. Roll your body into a target of three. Do you know how this works, Ty? No, but I okay. just I just read something. Virtues hovering. Yeah, that's going to be helpful for you. So, <laughs> so your your dice pool. Anytime you make a roll, is one of your four strengths: body, mind, heart, and spirit. Your body okay. is what you're rolling right now. I believe two dice in body. Is that right? Yes. Uh, well, I have... Buster's not a big, strong robot. You're not a big, no. strong robot. That's not yet. how it is. <laughs> not yet, that means. Buster has plans. <laughs> you got two victories? If you loony? Because of your amazing dice? Your, your Captain Marvel dice? Exactly, because I got a one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so, when you want to find... You're rolling low in this game. When you want to find what you have to roll tie, you add up all the things on your character sheet under virtues and under training that make it work. Okay? You know so, so Buster has... Hovering. What's that? I, I'll talk to Mikhail other ways. Go, Go ahead, Tom. Okay. So hovering is important right now. You have two basic skills that give you a basic target of two on any roll. I think Buster Knowledge and Buster Something... Let me just take a quick look at Buster's character sheet here. Got it right here. Come on, open up. Doobie doobie doob. <laughs> you can use so any of these things that you think are going to be helpful to you, you make an argument for. Um, you don't have uh, yet flying under training. So mm -hmm. that's two. Hovering, Hovering and flying. flying. Um, Nav navigation. That's three. You see how this works? So you're now mm -hmm. you're rolling three and under. Um, <laughs> you can never make an argument. That's four. You're getting the idea. I put some things in there specifically to try and inspire you to make arguments under different circumstances. So you can try and use your assets, quote so unquote, four. as four. Exactly. You want to roll four and under. If there's ever a circumstance where you're like, but Buster was built by a crazy old man, so I can do this. You argue to me as the GM that that's the case. You see how that's under virtues? Buster is yeah. a mess. Well, I'm a mess, so I should be able to do this. That's mm -hmm. part of the fun of how the system works. So you're rolling your two dice for a target of four and under. If you roll a one, well, I roll a you three count and two. one. So that's three <laughs> figures. You're doing fine. 
if you if you had rolled a one, you would re-roll the die and count the one that you got. You can keep re-rolling that one as many times as you get a one. You follow me? Yes. If you roll an eight, you subtract one of the victories. The difficulty okay. of the action finally is determined by um how many victories you need to succeed. So the harder something is, the more victories you're going to need at the end of it. You can, this is a very easy game, and deliberately so, a very easy game to, to, to stock and, 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 uh, and min-max. If you, there's, there's systems for critical success, there's systems for cooperation. You can get way more victories than you need if you think through the action that you're taking. So problem solving goes a very, very long way in this game. And, and that's part of fun. And at the same time, dice being what they are, things can go catastrophically sideways on you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, so that's the basic mechanic of Star Rangers right there. You can try anything you want. There's no rules about what you can and can't do. You look at the character sheet, you figure out how to make it the characters and training that you have. So how is Chandra? I could try and carry someone. Yeah, it, I'm going to try and carry this person. Here's what I've got. <laughs> yeah. That's what Misha and and you know Mikhail right now has found a way to use his spirit for all his physical activity <laughs> because Mikhail has you know created massive amounts of spirit for his character and is not a very physical character and so you know he's just becoming Magneto day by day. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's it works there's no reason to make that not the game and all i can tell you is that you know when you lose an initiative role things go very sideways very fast so plan accordingly <laughs> don't get comfortable um but feel free to use your assets to your advantage is kind of the rule of thumb when it comes to playing jump rangers detour aside you make your way down this staircase that doesn't exist in this little pocket of earth, uh, you know, rock bender style, until at the very end, earth. a cavern earth. open. Earth bending. Earth bender. Right. It's a rock bending. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the, the stairway opens up into a big, glittering, beautiful cavern of of blue octonium on any other planet this cavern would represent a mother load and here it's just another you know just another deposit that at some point the saurians would love to get their paws on good luck we can't even Look see this <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're way way down below the surface and i fell down 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 Reaching out, reaching out his arm, um, Quartz pulls many of those octonium deposits back into the wall so that just a few crystals remain out in the open. Um, the cavern is brightly lit. And if the cavern is brightly um, lit, then I don't need a torch anymore. <laughs> You don't need a torch. You can put your torch away, and and uh, and and at the same time, if you're going to be experimenting on these octonium deposits, which is obviously his plan, um, you will you will uh, you will not be blowing all of the octonium up on the first try. <laughs> yeah. That is that is exactly what he's setting up. He's setting up a a, a range down here. So as the earth shifts and it swallows up the octonium crystals that you don't need right now, he looks at you, wizard, and he says, can you understand these readings that you have offered to share with me? Can you read them yourself? No. Readings? Which, what kind of readings? I can tell electromagnetic fields. For the... Uh, the 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 plans that the uh, the data that you offered to share from from uh, Sudro Paxis. Dex, right? On the, yeah, the I try and understand it. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, Lyra read that. I didn't read that. I did. Ah. Did you? In the ship. 
You read the whole data. <laughs> I was studying it. What are we not understanding? <laughs> uh, well... <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> what? What happened? Buster's what being happened? forgetful and is asking questions. What are we forgetting? Looks at you, Lyra. <laughs> Sam, is he talking to me? Just in general. <laughs> what are we forgetting or not understanding? <laughs> With blue eyes again. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're asking me, honey. We. We are trying to research something. Hello. Hi. Can you hear me? Quartz, quartz. Are you are you asking me, Ty, or are you asking the other players? I'm asking you. I don't understand okay. what you're saying. Quartz looks at you and he says, "Would you read that data deck so I can read it through your mind?" Um. Sure. Oh, you already read it. Okay. Not yet. Oh. Would you? I, so would, I've already read it. Is there a new one? Yes. So I don't have to read it. You can just go in there and see what I've read. Right. Quartz wants to. Well, anyway, that is Quartz's request. Okay, sure. Is it something you're willing to do? Or okay, all right. Do me a favor and roll to. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to roll to understand the data deck as completely as you can? Mine? Right? Yep. Yep. Okay. What have you got? So, smart, autistic, observant, common knowledge, basic training, aliens, alien starships, danger sense. There's no danger sense. You're at seven. Uh, and telepathy, because he's going to be in my head. Okay. I'll give you seven. Target of seven, and then one automatic victory. Wow. Meanwhile, Quartz is you going to do Quartz things. That automatic victory thing? Yes. So, uh, ooh. oh, Quartz, you're going to have to help him out. Okay. Oh, my uh, gosh. One, two, three, four, six, seven. Seven. All right. Wait. So was... you sit there studying the material. Or under? What? Seven or under, and you get okay. one automatic victory. Nine. Nine. Okay, good. So how that works is once you get more than seven on your target number, eight is always a botch. Eight can never give you a victory. So once you get more than seven on your target number because of whatever you're, you're training, you're doing something that you're an expert on, you start adding automatic victories to the roll. Oh. That's, that's, now, if you get more victories, there's, there's two other places where you can really compound this. If you get more victories than you need on any one particular roll, you can add them to the next role as long as it's relevant to what you're doing. So, for example, if you're aiming at someone and you get more victories than you need to hit them, you can add those extra victories to damage. On the other side of it, you can, if you're cooperating, subtract one die of your, of your strength and add someone else's virtues and training to your role. So you can compound roles very quickly with teamwork. Um, so either by planning way, way ahead or by working with other characters, you can start adding a lot of automatic victories to your role if you do it that way. If you're, you know, if you're the kind of player that's very headstrong and wants to do everything yourself and wants it now, 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 then you need to make sure that you stick to the things that you're good at. <laughs> um, yes. Exactly. Why are we so far underground? <laughs> Well, the work that we're doing—the work we're doing here—is very dangerous. Quartz says to the two of you in your minds, "We're going to be experimenting with different kinds of energy systems. We want to make sure that we don't create any damage on the surface." Energy, I understand. We're doing energy somethings, and we don't want to do any damage to the surface. Can I help in any way? We shall see. 
says Quartz. So, he said, well, as you study the material... <laughs> but, but Buster's eyes go yellow. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> With this, Quartz looks at one of the blue octonium crystals. And for a moment, his eyes, it, their eyes start to glow blue as well. And if you watch closely enough, Where you can Iggy? see that hmm. Iggy is back in the, in the colony. Iggy's back in the colony. But I thought we Iggy's were not down here. last time. We were. He followed Iggy to. We followed Iggy to Quartz, and then Quartz took it. over. And he no, he thanked us, and then said that we were going to work with Iggy, right? I don't remember. I don't think so. He said the last thing you said to us was, "Okay, follow." Uh, Iggy and he'll take you where you're needed. And then we rested for the night and then it's the next thing. Oh, so he just took us to bed? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he took you to the bedroom. <laughs> so. Okay. Concentration. The octonium crystal that Quartz is working on starts to flicker, and then, as if being changed intrinsically from the inside, it starts to turn red. And you'll notice that the red that it's turning is exactly the color that Saurian technology tends to radiate. It's the color of their of their Disruptor cannons, it's the color of their octonators. And Buster's eye go, go Buster's eyes go red and says danger. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't sound good. So Quartz <laughs> looks at you and says with the information you've given me, it's possible to affect energy systems um, on the wavelengths of Saurian technology. And this is the thing that I would like you to practice now so that we can teach it to others. But Buster still is wondering like hey, but is wonder, ask what's happening. <laughs> he, he's worried. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um, I think he's going to teach us how to make it red. No? Mm -hmm. Oh, he's going to teach us how to make it red. <laughs> Buster n nervously is, I can try. <laughs> I don't think that's going to Buster, I think he's talking to, to me and Wizard. I think. <laughs> Wizard is... Depends on what we are trying to make, I can help. you feel ready? Do you feel ready to attempt this? Wizard, Wizard? that's what you do. I'm so super, super scared. He asks, what are we trying to make with this? I don't know what to do. <laughs> what are we trying to make this into? That's what he asks. <laughs> mm. So, so... You are turning for, these octonium for, crystals into... Essentially, Saurian energy systems. Why? And this will be the very first step. Oh. Because once you manipulate it into a Saurian energy system, then you can you can start to do other things with it. You can shut it off. You can... Turn into a what then? Buster agrees to try. <laughs> <laughs> but Buster is a risk taker. <laughs> on a creature... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got a question. I got a question. <laughs> yes. What's your question? Why, why are we trying to replicate their stuff when we want to get rid of it? 
We don't want to make more of it. We want to get. We don't want to make more of it, but if we can understand it, it's easier to break. Your robot is correct. This and ah. you will also need examples to practice on. Plus, we can make our own weapons out of it if we must. <laughs> I don't like weapons. It's not an animal. Okay. You will not. You will not need weapons once you once you master these skills. Okay, great. So, what do we gotta do? Well, the first thing is to turn this octonium crystal here into a saurian <laughs> energy source. How do we do that? With the powers of your spirit, you have to look into. That's his. That's his game. Wavelengths. Now. <laughs> I could try and find it. <laughs> what? I said I could this, try and science this... it. <laughs> no. You can try and science it. Um, this is going to be an unthinkable achievement. Mikhail, you're going to need 12 victories to make this work. Wait, what? Okay. You're going to need 12 victories to make it work, but you, you're, you're going to have to pull those victories from somewhere. So now the question is, how are you going to turn your dice pool into 12 victories? Once you, you're going to have to do it three times. And then you can learn. What stands in front of uh... I only have four spirits. I get 12 victories and roll a lot. Buster stands in front of well, the... you've got You've got a couple of resources you can use to try and pull those 12 victories out here. You've got other people to cooperate with. You've got you know, the potential of doing uh, a, uh, a critical success on a previous role. Like if you wanted to study the crystal that has already been turned. There's a couple of different ways you can go about this. Is there any possible way I can try and science, my, science it instead of using spirit. <laughs> well, not without a laboratory. And also, what's Buster's mind? Mind is three dice. Twelve victories is a lot to ask a Buster under these circumstances. Plus, I have, <laughs> plus I have weapon systems, technology, science, True. repair, True. And I also have my database and uh, basic programming. Database and basic programming are two automatic um, target numbers on any role. They work like common knowledge and basic training. So your target is always two. Um, so then I would have listen. Then I would have weapon systems, technology, science, and repair, which is another four. Yep. <laughs> and. But you still are going to have to get those 12 victories out of your three dice of mind. Unless Plus you wind up doing a cooperative. Cooperative, so we can work together. Plus, Buster was built by a crazy old man. Not really a <laughs> oh, this, this, yeah, I would say crazy old man applies to this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can lend your, you can lend your, your virtues and training to Mikhail here. Yeah, can I can I help Mikhail with with like the telepathy aliens alien starship? Can I? I, I can give him access to my database. <laughs> yes. Open a little computer on my back. Yeah, giving access to that database. Yep. <laughs> An observant. Yep. By default, I yes. have a crit victory. And then I success a seven. I also roll eight dice. But if add, okay. If I add my four, right? Yeah, your four. That's twelve or eleven. And so you subtract a die. You subtract a die for her four. Right, subtract a die, and I get four extra victories. So that'd be five off the bat. I have some mm -hmm. dice now. So now you're in the ballpark, but you need you need you need to not roll any eights. If you take Buster's, if you take Buster's six, seven additional points, then you should be good. Yeah, and you subtract another die. 
five to seven. That's already <laughs> twelve. There you go. Don't roll more eights than you have victories. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Can he back up a bit? Victories. Can he Eight back victories. Up? Perfect. Back up a bit. Okay. Yeah, your, your face is like way up in the thing. There you go. Is that better? Yeah. Yeah, it looks better. Okay. I think well give it a, give Let it Let me a, see if we have any comments or anything. No comments. No, I'm the only Got one it. in the I'm the only one here. I, I, I have Twitch open as well, so I can also read any messages that pop up. <laughs> okay, so there's four viewers. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Luna So yeah, she's she's being she's being uh this is Lou. Lou the Chihuahua. That's my baby girl. Okay. <laughs> So, so that is I, the first roll science. of three that you're going to need to <laughs> total. Uh, so you turn 20. He has 20. 20. You, yes. out, I think you reach out with your mind to Dale. And you feel the, the crackle of stored energy, renewed energy within the octonium. And you start to you start to alter that energy deep on the quantum level. Sweet. And for a moment, it feels like the whole crystal is just going to crack and explode. But instead, you, you change its structure, and those changes ripple throughout the structure of the entire crystal. And as you sort of come to from your small little trance, you notice that the crystal is glowing brightly, brightly red. Cool. Good. Good says says yeah. quartz. He did do it. Did a thing. So using those same, yep, using those same skills, quartz. And this time he's going to do much better because that last one was a disaster. Um, can you dim the crystal? Ooh. Okay. So go ahead and reroll. So that'd be eight default victories. Yep. So the, the three of you were huddled together, solving these problems, talking through the science of it, talking. And this, and by the way, this process is taking, you know, quite a lot of time. Uh, maybe days. Maybe you don't know how long time Vest is moving down here. But this is a conversation mm -hmm. that is going on for, for, you know, a while. A while. But all exactly. of the science has gone into this. <laughs> and every couple of hours, Quartz walks away around a corner in this cave and comes back with trays, uh, stone trays covered in fresh vegetables and fresh grains, and he brings stone cups full of water. One time when he comes back, I ask him, where are you getting this stuff? Ooh. And Quartz just looks at you and blinks and hands you the food. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't get a response because I am robot. <laughs> <laughs> I think Quartz is my, just my, my, my eyes go blue in confusion again. <laughs> yes, it is. Confusing. White is neutral, so if I don't white is neutral, so if I don't mention anything, it's just white. But currently, they're blue because he's not understanding. <laughs> it is a mystery. <laughs> It is a new <laughs> Oh. Uh, Mikhail, roll me, roll me those dice one more time and don't botch. Oh, botching. The same rolls as last time. There's some mm -hmm. bonuses. Yep. As long as everybody's still working together. Yeah. So, uh, I'm giving you. All of the science. <laughs> Six victories. Okay. Plus the eight. Plus the eight left over, and then the support from this time round as well. 
Just some crazy. Oh, you don't get, you don't get, uh, you don't get the. Uh, or was there eight on top of the twelve that you needed? Okay. There was. All right. You room. dim, you dim the crystal. Yep. You dim the, you dim the crystal. Why are we doing this? <laughs> now, says Quartz, I want you, I want you to blow the crystal up. Okay. Um. Uh, should we not be in here though for that? It's safe, says Quartz. I've I've moved it's, the other Octoni out of the way. It is safer, but just in case. <laughs> I... <laughs> okay, wait, 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 yes. wait. Because we won't destroy the colony. <laughs> you 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 definitely hit the crystals, but what about me? Like am I, I give you, I give in front of you as we do this. <laughs> it's a big it's a big it's a big cavern. <laughs> it's a big cavern. You're not gonna block mine. <laughs> okay. Buffer will protect. If you hold him in front of you like a plate, though. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. All right, then. Go for it. All right. I'm going to the side of the cavern. So it's the same role as the first time, but without the automatic yep. victories of it. Yes. At that point, then Why I shouldn't get their help. Or I shouldn't use their help then, because that's just negating me two dice for nothing. Gotcha. Oh, um, yes, correct. Um, wait a sec. You, so he doesn't get the the victories. Are if 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 they're hiding, then they can't help you. That's for sure. <laughs> are no, you guys I helping? I am still you? I am still gonna help. I just getting in the way of the explosion. Okay. I, I'm All right. Over here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more so about getting in the way of the shrapnel. Yeah. Unless yeah. you need. You work it all out. Unless you need my help. I'm helping. I'm just getting in the way of the shrapnel. <laughs> yes. Okay. I'm just. Um, I'll stand behind Wizard, and he can do it. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, Wizard. You're getting. You're getting your bonuses. Um. You got it in all. In case it's already a victory. This is just for bonus. Okay. Okay. Uh oh. So... My back hurts. That's four extra. Minus two. So, two extra. So that's 14 then total. Okay. So, you reach out with your mind towards the crystal. And you feel the energies rippling, you know, throughout its subatomic structure. And you set off a chain reaction within that structure that blows the whole thing up. Essentially turning it into the same kind of antimatter that they use in their disruptors. And wow. that whole side of the cavern just erupts in explosive flame blowing the cavern out back and as the explosion ripples and races towards you it hits an invisible wall maintained by quartz hey guys, I can so you are now. shielded <laughs> 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 so hey, it's time to make makeshift bombs <laughs> yep this whole process down here has taken you um at least a couple of weeks. By the time it's done, you've been sitting here studying the Octonium. You've been sitting down here eating these same vegetables and grains, which are, in fact, quite tasty and fresh, um, and drinking the water. And you have mastered the training of Saurian technokinesis. Saurian. Ooh, look at you, wizard. I'm gonna make makeshift grenades. <laughs> you too, you too, Ippy Looney, have mastered the skill of Saurian technokinesis, the training. Ooh, that's something. I have learned the science of it. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Buster has to be programmed to learn these things. Buster doesn't work exactly the same way as Jump Rangers do, do when it comes to training. But 
Okay, so I can add. did record a lot of information. That's under training, right? It's under training. You've been trained in Sorian technokinesis. And Quartz has also learned Sorian technokinesis. Wow. And with that explosion finished, Quartz looks at the two of you and says, I think it's time for us to leave. Let's make some bombs. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, he walks back out of the cavern, and the stairs appear before him, and you guys walk, walk up your earth-bending bubble back to the surface of planet rock just outside the uh, just outside the entrance to the Azure Mountain. So while they gain spirit, I just gain knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. Mikhail, Mikhail or, or I'm sorry, Wizard and Buster, they got the, the niceness of like being able to fly up. I don't got that. That's a lot of stairs. I can lift you up probably. Can you can you can you fly me too? Likely. <laughs> All right, so you have to Buster gives green eye green eyes. As in really. <laughs> you have to you have to uh you have to split your die pool for that, Mikhail, so it's two dice sync from two spirit rolls. That's how it works. Wait, what? Or no no, split your dipole. Just split your just split your, your spirit die in half. That's what it is. Oh. Half your spirit dice for Ippy Looney and half of them for you. That's that's the trick here. Hmm. Sorry about that. But it's very Um So Sometimes how many you... dice do you have in spirit? You have eight. seven dice in spirit, right? Plus eight. eight because of the one you have from your so four dice per roll. And it, you're seven and under for these rolls, so I think you'll be fine. Okay. So I need to do a body check, correct? Yes. Please do, Buster. And don't forget to add your, your Buster database and your Buster knowledge, whatever it was, your Buster database and your Buster, your two. Along, with, along with flying, uh, hovering, and all that. So I have seven. Yes. Three for myself and four for Lyra. Totally across your head. Uh, two and a four. Okay, great. Okay. Perfect. All right, Buster. Buster is starting to run low on power, you guys. You Buster's to... starting to smash into the sides of the rock. I need a solar panel. <laughs> Ty, you need to... <laughs> well, you guys. Can I please talk? Ty, you need to move your camera yes. up because straight across your face. How about I just sit up straight? There you go. <laughs> uh, um, right now, we only see about this much of you. <laughs> <laughs> Is that better? doesn't want to charge Buster with your I'm waiting. It, it's a 10-second delay, what? so I'm waiting. That's There's up. too many conversations at this point. Where are we at? Does someone want to charge Buster with their octonator? What happened? Did he? Buster is starting to smash into the walls. Well, no. I, didn't, I didn't climb, so I can't. I because he helped me, so I can help. Uh huh. Him. Or I can do okay. electrokinesis. Oh yeah, you could do that. <laughs> <laughs> you have octonators. You don't need to try and use the power of your mind to rejuvenate Buster. But I can. I can mind because I'm. Yeah, <laughs> Okay, roll spirit to see how your Buster abuse works out. <laughs> Buster just goes fly into a wall and drops. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, just work, just work in my system. There you go. Yep. You guys are too young for that, but whatever. Accidentally killed Buster. What's your, what's your, what's your target for this roll? Misha. Seven. Seven. Okay. I guess Roll spirit. Victories. Okay. All right. 
All right. You you shoot electricity from your hands and you charge Buster up, and Buster Wah! does the you know Steven Spielberg robot scream and zooms around for a couple seconds oh. and then has no I become Wally for the rest of your trip. Wally. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Now he's talking. Lightning still. <laughs> lightning still crackling off of Buster by the time you reach the surface. Sweet. Wally just starts screaming um, up the stairs. <laughs> Swiss <laughs> man over here. <laughs> By the time you reach the surface, time has been time has been you know very different for you guys for quite for quite a few for for as long as you can remember. You've been down there buried in math and spirit for for until your brains turn to mush. So or sort of boards. As you as you reach the end of your journey. You're you're served a, a lovely meal once again by Quartz uh, in your quarters. And then Quartz looks at you and says, It has been several weeks since we descended into the ground. Things will be different at the Saurian outpost, and there are two things we need to accomplish to plan our assault on the base. How long did- on the one hand uh, several weeks. <laughs> did we lose B- Buster just shrugs it off as like time is nothing. Wait, <laughs> yep. did we lose- because Buster lives forever as long as he gets repairs. <laughs> yes, true. So he doesn't care about time. Buster is- okay, good thinking. <sighs> to make this attack work, we're going to need information about how the Saurian presence on Planet Rock has developed, and I'm going to need to train the other Rockmans of the Azure Mountain in the techniques that we've developed. Is it too much of me to ask you to go and gather that information, find out exactly what forces we're dealing with, and create a map of the Saurian installation? Oh, that might blow up some of it. (laughs) <laughs> How you do this is at, of course, your discretion. I'm merely asking for your help. Buster is not good with stealth. <laughs> <laughs> As he p- pounces his chest and makes a little clanking sound. He has not with your little arm. Head. Yeah, my little metal arm. <laughs> Wait, so wait a second. You want us to go where and when? Like, shouldn't we rest because we've just been up for two weeks or four weeks or ten weeks? No, no, you've you've been been taking taking rest. You've been taking rest. You've been taking rest. You haven't been awake for the whole two. No, you've been resting. You've been having meals. You've been taking rests. It's been been a good long time. It was a train. Mm -hmm. Yes. I can be navigator, but I will not join in stealth mission. You, you should probably maybe stay here, but... Okay. So what are we... You can always use Buster as a lookout. Yeah. Because he's good with navigation, so... Sensors... Those could help, along with the ability of flying and hovering. Are we deciding something here? I don't... Huh? I just... Okay. I'm ready. Let's go. (laughs) (laughs) Plus he also has navigation, which could help him. So you enjoy your meal. And then you start retracing your steps back to the Saurian encampment where all this started. You work your way back to the mountain where Iggy first stood up and then back across the desert to the to the uh the first um Rockman ruins where you first discovered Iggy and where you found the I created. Where you found the, uh, 
discovered. Where you created Iggy, yes. And where you found the devastation created by the Undersource Scouts. Okay. So, Do I have to do a navigation check to know where we're going and not get lost? <laughs> I think we're just following our I, I think, you know, yeah, you're, you're, just, you're going back the way you came. I think at this point you, you know how to get to where you're going. But you are going to have to make a stealth check from here on in to make sure that you can approach the, the Saurian camp without getting seen because things have changed. And in fact, you can already hear Dragon, Starfighter, um, what do you call them, scouts up overhead, screaming through the air. So it's I just start patrolling instead of continuing towards the base. I start patrolling okay. in a general vicinity around the... Good job. Good job, Buster. All right, wizard. Okay. Do I have like a solar panel that, to keep me charged as I go? <laughs> uh, you need to be charged once a day with Doctinator, unless you start botching rolls, in which case, obviously, you need to be charged more frequently. So what? we'll say that you've already had your charge. Okay. I, I, have, I have like no patience to this. What are we rolling for? <laughs> <laughs> you are rolling for stealth, you and Wizard. But is there there is no stealth, so is that body? You're gonna you're gonna approach the 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 body Saurian body. encampment without getting spotted. It's a it's a body roll. Okay. It's a body roll. You're welcome. And what are you what are you rolling your body into? What have you got? Smart, quick, autistic, observant, common knowledge, basic training, aliens, danger sense, sneaking, stealth. That's nine. Ten. Uh, <laughs> I not, I'm not allowing smart or quick. I and I... Um, what's that? To be stealthy. No, you have to take your time sometimes. I you know. have to be quick. Sometimes you have to take your time. You have to be Patience quick. is key when it comes to self. I know this all too well. <laughs> I, I, I played a stealth game before. Tried to rush it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I instantly died and got overwhelmed. <laughs> you okay, Fergus? Yes, it's a lot. I'm just trying to figure this okay. out. So I had I had ten so okay. took away, I have nine. I took two away, you have eight. Wait, which ones did you take away? Quick and something. Quick and smart. Don't you have to be smart to be stealthy? Nope. You have no. to be patient. You have to take one. your time. One victory, and I have to roll over something. Okay. I got it. Okay. Thanks for good stealth around as I'm doing my patrol. <laughs> Bye. We will get to your patrol in a second, Ty. Five victories, okay. And, Mikhail, what have you got? Your rolling body. What's your body? Uh, we're not going to be doing stealth, I think. <laughs> I have two. <laughs> <laughs> two body. Okay. What have you got by way of... Um, by way of uh, virtues and training? Literally nothing. But okay. Couldn't he do, like, don't you have telekinetic stuff? I was thinking of using telekinetic, well, at that point, then what is it? Using telekinesis to hide myself uh, in the dust whenever something would come around. That's a little fishy. Uh, is that the whole idea? What about <laughs> I make... A big old dust cloud, like a sandstorm. Okay. Alright, you're gonna make a sandstorm and try and trick the Saurians? Yes. Alrighty, a quick storm go for it. Pyro and pyrokinesis. On the air. Okay. <laughs> okay. And you can use your, your telekinesis as well. Okay. So that's three, mind over matter. Four. Four, 
That'd be Basically. smart, psychic, uh, science. That's not smart. We'll give you psychic. <laughs> psychic and science, yes. The weather cycle as an advantage. It's it's a it's it's a pretty ambitious effect. You're gonna try and create a storm so big that nobody can see you and no one's suspicious of what you're up to. I I I'm just saying I'm not gonna give you smart on the roll. Okay. <laughs> so that's six. That's you're rolling your 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 dice. Roll your dice into a target of six. Tell me how many victories you get. You're gonna be encountering some. Under under sword troopers on your way into the base to take stock of what's going on, and we're gonna we're gonna do a contested roll to see whether or not this makes them more or less suspicious of you. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine. Okay. <sighs> Two. Lou is bored. Alright. And four, five, six, seven. Let me know how you did. Nine. Nine victories. Alright. Alright. You whip up. You whip up a um, massive, massive dust storm Sweet. that blows in off the off the um, desert and in towards the base. And you can see very clearly it's filling all the sensors with grit. It's creating all kinds of confusion. And as you march off. Um, you know, across the plane back towards where they landed, you can see that there are whole, those mining trains that they were loading before are skimming all across the surface. They've already started to dig mines into the mountain faces closest to the installation. And there's whole teams of miners getting loaded and offloaded um, from these trains. And, and, you know, Arctonium ore is being picked up and shuttled back into the base. Um, as you start moving closer, you can see that there's been a big wall. Am I moving about, with I'm assuming so, right? You're moving with him, but I'm assuming you're keeping yourself hidden much more carefully than he is. He's kind of just, just he's, his, eyes are, his eyes are glowing. He's just walking straight through the storm, and the storm is all swirling around him. You can take cover behind rocks and keep yourself hidden. He is the storm. He is the storm. And you are, you are, you are, you are, you know, you're there in the middle of it, but you're, you're being much more careful about how you present yourself. All right. So, um, let me fast forward here. The embodiment of There's about, <laughs> looking at all the activity around you, um, you're getting the sense that there's about 10 of these trains scooting around at any given point in time. There's a huge perimeter around the, around the base that's set up, you know, like, a, like an octagon with guard posts at each corner. And there's a massive gate leading a one gate only, which is, guarded by undersore guards leading oh. into the base. You can't see what's going on on the other side of that wall, but you are um, pretty sure that the wyvern that the scouts landed on is would be kind of just on the inside perimeter of, of that fence. It's not a fence, it's a wall. Uh, Buster, in your... <laughs> In your patrol, I want you to roll to see what you can pick up. I think so you're scared. Would be, I have uh, sensors. Sensors, and this is a mind roll. 
mind. So yep, we're sensors, I automatically get database and basic programming. Yep. That's three. Yep. Uh, navigation. I'll give you navigation. That's four. So navigation and then... That's all I can really do for that. All right, your targets, your targets four and under. I want you to roll for me. Uh, four and a seven. <laughs> four and seven. Okay, so that's one victory. Uh, oh no, wait, I have three dice for mine. Okay. Yeah, three. That did not help. I got got an eight. <laughs> 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 That's a botch. It would have helped without the extra dice. <laughs> Not much I can do about that. Alrighty, though. Buster. <laughs> so, you're hovering there, kind of scanning around, boop, 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 checking everything out. And you can see a figure standing in the storm in front of you, looking at you. <laughs> like, like, just staring you down. Kind of cl clearly trying to figure out what you friendly are. Friendly enemy. <laughs> What's that? I said friendly enemy. Don't know. <laughs> Don't know. It's a very big storm. But they start walking towards you. Eyes go yellow as in caution. <laughs> the figure stops. Um, so from white to yellow. <laughs> and whatever that figure is reaches for a weapon at its side and it's a it's a handheld weapon and points it at you. My head, head tilts to the side like. <laughs> like it's are you trying to fight me? <laughs> <laughs> it starts to approach you. I take a more okay. su suitable stance for combat, if necessary. Okay. So I basically just square up. <laughs> you square up. All right. Well, an underscore scout that is uh, following. Oh, we lost Dippy Looney. Yeah, I'm coming back. Hold on. Okay. I I, I lost my button. <laughs> you lost your butt. <laughs> button. There we go. Oh, okay. I was trying to see if I could take my charger from my phone. <laughs> Got it. So the the scout starts walking up to you uh, mm -hmm. as it follows the trail of of one of your rangers, and it taps you on the top, taps you on the top of your saucer. Is it dinosaur? It's a lizard man. It's a lizard man dressed in um, kind of a uh, commando's uniform with a cloak and cape around it. The Undersaur has a disruptor uh, at its side. The, scanning the main, the the main enemies we are fighting, what do they look like? Uh, this, is, this is one of them. So there's two, there's two kinds of Saurians. There's Undersaurs, which are lizard men and look exactly like the creature standing in front of you. They're like professional wrestlers, but a little stringier and lankier and more lizard-like, um, with tails for balance and kind of raptor-like heads and uh, beefy shoulders and legs for climbing and running. Oh, like the, the rock they stand up straight. Uh, I more or less tap it on the head, like, do you need something? Just... Do you need something? <laughs> it's good to me. I'm tapping it back and saying, do you need something? <laughs> so to deploy one of your armatures, you're going to have to roll for it. Usually when there's no combat, I'm not going to ask you for that roll. But because it's so pivotal right now that you get this right, um, I'm going to ask you for two dice. And you need at least one victory. Is it? Let me just double check Buster's character sheet. Uh, right robotics now. arm details. Plus two dice, two body rolls involving arm. Right, but at the top it says what you need to roll to actually whip it out. 
it, which is uh, you need. Right way to say it's that. an easy roll. So make a body roll. Make a body roll. Mm -hmm. Don't get two eights. I need. I, I need to see. Huh? Let's see. You need to see what? Uh, what your target is going to be for on this roll, just because I don't want to trouble you for any 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 well, questions. Would my arm can be considered a weapon weapon system? <laughs> nope. No. You don't have you don't have any weapon systems. You're a peaceful robot. <laughs> then all, when all I would really have is. You're just a helper. You're a helper robot. For then my repair could be, be a part of that. Because <laughs> it's my own. Because repair. <laughs> so you got your common knowledge, basic training, uh, your. And repair. <laughs> what else? Repair. Uh, I'm going to say I'm going to say your targets two. Roll your two dice into a target of two. Get me one. One and a three. Re roll your one. You're in luck. Another three. You pop out your arm. So a one, a three, and a three. You pop out your arm, and you, oh. you pat this undersore on the shoulder. I say, what do you need? What do you need? Let's Ooh, see if yeah, it understands. Yellows understand. are more vibrant yellow now, though. You should call him Sam. Say, what do you need, Sam? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not. Well, he just he just says, "What do you need?" and then pass as he passes him on the shoulder. <laughs> well, huh? All right. Well, the undersource is confused, and you're confused. So we're going to take a break from this real quick, and we're going to get back to the other. <laughs> We're gonna get back to the other characters while I figure out what to do. We're both just staring at each other like, "What in the world? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on?" <laughs> Buster's potentially making friends with the scouts. I don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> More information to come on this exciting development. <laughs> um, so that's that's the situation with the with the with the encampment, you guys. What is your plan? Do you want to find out what's going on behind that wall? Or are you satisfied with the information that you have? Are you making I don't know. a map later? Because I, I don't have a good memory. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I have... Uh, I have I, I'm autistic. I see everything. Okay. Um, All right. I, I have taken in what I can. Do you want to look on the other side of the wall, wizard? Sure, why not? We got this good cover. Um, okay. <laughs> Are you going to fly up over there, wizard? Is that your plan? Just fly over it with the storm around you? Yeah, why not? And leave me here? Do you want, uh... Can you take me with you? You're not going to be able to hide if he takes you with him. Oh. Oh, maybe I'll just hide there. here behind these barrels and you can go look. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, I'll All right, wizard. In the storm. All right. So you're going to be splitting your... Yes. I have a cutting laser. Is that like on a belt or is that like a part of my arm? <laughs> It's all of these things are things that pop out of different hatches with little arms of their own. Okay. So your cutting laser is a different arm than your grabbing arm. And if you ever want to pop something out in combat, you can either divide your dice pool, like we've been doing, like Wizard's about to do two things at once. So what Wizard's going to do is make two separate rolls using, the, using his spirit pool, and he can separate them any way he wants to. Mm -hmm. you see what I'm saying? Yeah. You can do that and use your dice to try and get your armature out and then use your armature. Or, alternatively, you can roll one die and take what you get. <laughs> and then have all your dice for what comes after. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. Those, those are your options in combat. So, there's a little bit of unpredictability that comes with playing Buster. Because most of the time, you're probably going to want to preserve your two dice of body. <laughs> Well, I'm going to actually do since I have my arm out now at the moment. Right. 
you're prepared for what comes next with this guy at the moment. But mm-hmm. if you find yourself in a pinch, what you can do is just use your free action, roll one die, and see what comes of it. Yeah. Maybe something good, maybe something bad. <laughs> Buster's, Buster's got a lot of useful things that could happen. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe, maybe some things that don't prove as useful along the way. Oh, but yeah, I'm creative. Scanner. Yeah, you've got a multi scanner, you've got a med kit applicator, you've got a grappler, you've got your, your, your hacking interface, you've got a cutting laser robotic arm, and you've got yeah. like an Iron Man pulse booster. And also a multi ratchet for tools. So, any one of those things could be used under a lot of different circumstances, but you're going to have to adapt to the situation as it as it reveals. Well, itself. if I ever get a giant pile of scrap, I know exactly what I'm doing. I have two ideas. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> so, wizard. No, I'm hiding. Yes, if she what? wants to stay. You've got. Okay, I think that's probably wise. You've got two rolls you're going to need to make with your dice pool. Hmm. So pull, take your, you're taking your, your, your spirit dice, you're separating them into two pools. For... One is for the flying, and one is for the storm. Let's see. Oh, wow. So, what, would you like to... So it's four and four, I'm assuming? Or do you want to just... Or do you think your flying doesn't need as many dice? Four and four is fine. Okay. The storm already has one victory by default. Because you got more than you needed last yeah. time. Oh no, because that's how many. That's just gotcha. How okay. What I got for my birthday. Okay. The pork. He makes noise. Wait, listen. <laughs> so it's five, five victories for the storm. Okay. Uh, two victories and two eights for flying. Two victories and two eights, which take away the two victories? Yes. So I guess I'm not okay. flying. You're not flying. You're standing there, and you've got, you said, four or five victories for the storm. Five for the storm. Five for the storm. All right, hang tight one sec. We're going to see how these guards are doing. All right. One... Two, three, four. All right. Ah. Uh, all right. The storm I... whirls around you. I... It's 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 keeping you hidden, but you're not you're not getting any you're not getting any higher in the sky. Well, so... you're gonna need another plan. It's too much for your brain to handle. You've you've. You found limits to your power. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to learn more kinesis, I guess. For now. <laughs> For now. All right. Is there any other way around the wall other than over? Is there like a underneath? You can go through the gate. No, I'm not going through no gate. <laughs> There's the front door. You can always sneak aboard another mining train. Oh yeah. <laughs> you can go to one of the mines and, and climb aboard, climb in with all the octonium. We could stand on each other's shoulders and put on armor and walk in. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we're gonna let you guys think about how you wanna do this real quick and we're gonna go back to Ty and the Scout. Okay. Well, well, so how does the scout react to me tapping him on the shoulder and saying, what do you need? <laughs> what? Well, it looks at you and it snarls in Undersore. And it kind of pats your hand and uh, puts a hand on your, on your little dome and starts to sort of pull you with it. Like, it puts an arm around your shoulder, proverbially, and starts to guide you in the direction of the rangers. It pulls out a communicator and speaks into it in Saurian. 
Well, as it go, go brings out brings it out, can I just grab it and crush it with the robotic arm? You're not that big. <laughs> you want to crush its communicator? Like um, sure. Roll for initiative. Roll for initiative, Ty. Uh, uh, initiative is either mind or spirit, whichever is mind or spirit, whichever is higher. Mind. So three dice. All right. Um, and you're rolling always initiative. Called, now here's what it is, Ty. Initiative, soaking damage, which is called endurance, and dealing damage. These are all called combat rolls. They all always have a target of four. So you're rolling your mind into a target of four, and okay. the underscore. Uh, so I don't get any bonuses to this, correct? Nope. Nope. Uh, you need. You're going to need a lot of ones to beat the scout. Uh, one, two. I got a one, a one, and a two so far. Okay. <laughs> if you actually make this work, I'm going to be very impressed. I got another one and a two. Oh my goodness. And a five. You tie the scout. So. <laughs> so. Okay. You managed to get your. You managed to get your grappler on its communicator as it whips out a disruptor blaster um, in response to in response to your aggression. Um, go ahead and roll, roll, <laughs> roll, roll, body, um, including your added bonuses for your arm to try and crush the communicator. And he's gonna he's gonna try and get a shot off on you. Oh, uh, that's a one, a three, a four, and another one. <laughs> okay, roll your what, ones. Roll one? and, uh, yeah, and uh, again, this is damage. This is another combat roll. Uh huh. And a two. <laughs> Here's the good news. You pulverize that communicator. <laughs> Your dice are amazing. Um, you pulverize I'm that communicator. At the moment. We'll see if that keeps up. Yeah. Yep. He manages to get a shot off on you while you're, because you're, you're both sort of, you know, rushing to make all this happen. So I close it. He shoots me. <laughs> yep. Yep. Fine. So, so he's probably a little angry now that the communicator is gone. So, well, he. He knows you're not friendly. That's for sure. <laughs> Since the communicator is now gone. Yeah. Seven. Okay, Ty. Uh, here is where you get to roll your body and soak damage. So four dice again? So, uh, you're not using your arm for this. This is just your so body. Just so just two. A four and, and two. Okay. You take five dice of five points of damage um, as he blasts you with his disruptor. Boom! Antimatter explosion rips through you. Um, here's so how damage I'm, works. So I have nine da damage like boxes here. Those damage boxes. You're gonna check off five of them. If it doesn't quite work in the character sheet, then oh no, it does. Yep, check off five. So you'll notice that. Um, the only so every die that's under a check mark at this point is cancelled. That's how this works. So you don't get to roll the dice that are under check marks, which means you only have one die of heart left. Right? You see how that works? Mm -hmm. Yes. If you do something that makes me ask you for a roll for which you have no dice, you go unconscious. So I have only so one Buster, heart left. Yeah. <laughs> There's, your options are pretty limited in terms of how you're going to get out of this. <laughs> so, but so it's my turn again now, right? More or less? <laughs> yeah, let's roll initiative and see how that goes. So roll your initiative. 
Now, this doesn't count. Combat rolls, you don't get unconscious for. Just so that we're clear. Combat rolls are, are exactly what they are. Oh. So, uh, so this is bo uh, body. So I have only two dice because it's not involved in the arm. Uh, for, for initiative, you're rolling either mind or spirit, whichever is higher. Oh, mind. Yep. So, so roll I mind. have a one, a three, and a four. Okay. So roll the one. Yep. Why am I so lucky today? That's another <laughs> one. Two. Oh so one, oh one, two, three, four. Buster, you have to drop on this undersaur. What would you like to do with that? Can I disarm that? <laughs> Not if it's going to take a body roll. You have to do something with your heart. Is it male? <laughs> What's that? Is it male? Can he kick it in the nuts? Exactly. No, 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 Buster. You can't do anything if if you if you do something that requires a body check. You're going unconscious. The only thing that you can do right now is a social roll, or you go unconscious. You insist on trying to kick him in the nuts. Is my question. <laughs> <laughs> Can I go watch the pulse boost away? <laughs> or does that require... It, it gives me five I'm dice to body you. roll for I'm boosting. <laughs> roll your one. Roll your one. Your one, um... If I even ask you for a body check to try and pop out your booster, you realize that you're going unconscious. So... Roll your one free action to see what tool you get. That's a two. <laughs> All right, what, what, what is two? Two is, here it is, there's Buster. Two is your robotic arm, you, your robotic arm. Buster, you're done. <laughs> you, you fall unconscious. You go to attack it with your robotic arm, and you just hit the ground. You're out yeah. of court. And the undersword picks, picks you up and starts carrying you back as an object of curiosity. <laughs> Buster's been captured, you guys. <laughs> well, they don't know that yet. <laughs> I, I need to set up like a sonar beep, 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 beep. Well, okay, so can we... That that really good thing. I, I tried to make a friend, I tried to make a friend, then it, and then it just went downhill. <laughs> All right, friend. No. Nope. Yep. <laughs> All right, it's guys. Not, it's not missing a communicator, so it can't get any help getting back. It has to walk back without help. That's true. You are correct. You are correct. <sighs> I don't know if right. someone notices him. <laughs> back to our players, Lyra and Wizard. What are you doing? We've decided that we're back and tell them what we're, what we're up against. Report back A wall. to Quartzman. Okay. All right. So you're going to take the information you have and call it a day. Yeah. All right. You start making your way back the way you came, and I am going to ask the two of you for... Um, some kind of perception check. You're maintaining the storm, I imagine? Yeah. Okay. Roll to see if you can if you can see anything that's changing in your environment. What what do you have along those lines, both of you? Is that a spear? I need to know which roll it is. It's a mind roll. You're trying to you're trying to oh. sift information. Very good. Okay. Is this a Lyra specialty? It I'll is. give you autistic. Okay. Yes. Uh, smart, autistic, observant, common knowledge, basic training, danger sense, sneaking, stealth, telepathy. That's not sneaking, not stealth. And this is, yeah, and not telepathy. Um, so what does that leave you with? Seven. Okay. Roll your mind. And we're going to roll this dude. 
I'm probably going to have to go here shortly. <laughs> yeah, we're almost okay. done. This is a close to a good spot to wrap up the session. Yeah. I, I got names. Yes, we just need to... Let's just uh, get to okay. Oh, we'll, we'll call it a day. Okay. You got to... You got an eight, eight victories, or you got an eight on one of your dice? I got eight victories. Okay. Someone's approaching you through the... Through the through the storm. Okay. Um, and as you start as you start creeping on them, you can see that it's one of the underscore scouts. They haven't okay. spotted you yet, and okay. they've got Buster under their arm. Oh no! <laughs> and we'll we'll stop here. We'll stop okay. here. We'll let you guys talk about how you want to manage this. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to make so, a friend. It went downhill. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's rebooted programming. <laughs> All right, that sounds like a great place to stop. So at the end of every session, we do a quick post mortem to see if anybody has any questions, concerns, or anything about what's going on. Does anybody have any of those? Nope. Nope. All right. The only question I have: so Would I have survived if I got my booster out? <laughs> No, there was I. <laughs> you need because to find a social five to my... right, but you understand that's more like a at any event. No, you were you were really brought me away from you, the lizard. It might have. It might have. Which could have which could have let me get which could have let me live instead of being captured. Possibly, possibly. That's what I was hoping, and then rolls rolls weren't in my favor that time. No. (laughs) (laughs) All right, all right. Uh, No questions, no comments. I'm gathering. No questions, no. In that case, perfect. I'm going to thank everybody for coming and watching the Saturday morning cartoon show stream. Happy birthday to Misha, and we will catch everybody next week, 11 a.m. Pacific time. Here on Twitch, we've already started posting back episodes on youtube.com backslash eight-sided films. So if anybody wants to catch up on the story, that's possible now. And we will catch you next week. Have a great week, everybody. Thank you.